Hello and welcome to the fifth part of my series on photographing wildlife at Wild Place Projects in North Bristol. I'm professional wildlife photographer and naturalist Oliver Smart and today is the last of the techniques episodes with the final one, part six, discussing the process for preparing and uploading your images to the competition. I hope you've enjoyed them so far and this last look at techniques is to try and get you thinking outside the box a little bit more. For many wildlife shots, there comes a lot of planning, research and preparation, with the actual shot just taking a fraction of a second. It's the combined elements of researching your subjects, timing, waiting for the subject to do the thing that you want, of course, and you pressing the shutter at just the right moment. Now, that sounds all rather straightforward, doesn't it? Well, of course, nothing is that easy, but you can have a lot of fun trying. Action is by far the most sought after element in wildlife photography. Portraits are much easier to shoot, but it's when you want to expand on this and not only build a portfolio of images, but to illustrate the full life cycle of a subject. Wildlife interacting is fascinating to watch and to capture these moments on camera is by far the most rewarding for us too. It's a privilege to be able to witness some of these intimate and unique moments. Interaction shows an insight into the species and perhaps helps you to understand them more. Not to forget the fact that action shots add drama, excitement and awe, truly the wow factor. The spring and summer is a great time to be out watching wildlife. In the UK, it is now the breeding season, so millions of creatures are here to find a mate and to breed. Plants too are showing their beauty, so don't forget to look all around you, above you and indeed under your feet as you wander around the site. If you are using a DSLR or mirrorless bridge or compact camera, then for action make sure you have enough shutter speed to render a sharp image. What you do not want is for the subject to move and you press the button only to find it's a blurred image. For very fast species, you may need as much as 1 2,500th of a second. However, for slower movement, then you might be able to accept, get acceptable results from 1 500th or even a thousandth of a second. Never be afraid to increase your film speed or ISO speed as you're better getting a sharp image, even if it may appear a little noisy. And by noise, I'm referring to the digital noise created on the sensor when shooting at higher ISO speeds. As for the aperture, then depending on your subject, and how much detail you wish to be in sharp focus will dictate, along with the amount of available light, as to what you can get away with. With many of the lenses I shoot with, I prefer f5.6 or f8, which often gives me a nice depth of field to my images. Depth of field refers to the amount of the image that is rendered in sharp focus. However, if I am shooting action shots, then I may prefer to opt towards f2.8 or f4 to give me more light and therefore a faster shooting speed. In contrast, if I'm shooting landscapes, plants or groups of animals, then I might opt for a larger aperture value to increase the amount of sharp focus across the image. It really is a personal choice at the time of shooting, so understanding the impact of changing your aperture is very important. And don't forget, you can go for a truly artistic impression and have a blurred image, so long as it appears deliberate and not just an out of focus subject. Once you're in position, then think more carefully about how you compose and shoot your subject. Can you create impact with the subject so that it stands out from the background? Is it possible that there is a nice symmetry, repetition or reflection that can be achieved? Can you shoot through vegetation to give an impression of peering into a different world as the subject hides or is tucked away inside a bush or a wildflower in amongst a grassland or meadow? Don't be afraid to experiment and change your angle or position. It's amazing what a few centimetres can do to improve the view of your subject. I love to shoot at eye level to the subject, which often involves lying on the ground to get a perfect insight into the world of a bug or plant. So that's it for me folks, I hope this has given you the final push to get down to Wild Place and has inspired you with ideas to try out for yourself. I cannot wait to see your entries and will very much look forward to judging them with members of the Wild Place project team soon. Good luck with your visit, your photography and your submission and if you need any final help then tune into part 6 where I will tell you exactly how to prepare and submit your images.